time comes in every person's life where they stand at a crossroad, a threshold between innocence and experience. It is here that we find the rite of passage, a journey that we must all take, a journey filled with fear, pain, exhilaration and bravery. It is here where we must let go of the hand of those that raised us and discover who we are. The rite of passage is a sacred ritual passed down through the generations for thousands of years, shaping our destinies and forging unbreakable bonds. Join me today as we bring this vital tradition to light and understand more about how different cultures transform their children into adults. Enjoy. Before we delve into some of the ancient rites of passage practiced throughout our history, we must first explore why the rite of passage is an important social aspect for our species, as well as how it's prominent in other animals. A rite of passage is any marker that represents a major change in someone's life, mostly the transition from being a child to becoming an adult. Rites of passage are prevalent in virtually every culture around the world, and many various traditions have very similar characteristics. For example, rites of passage usually happen around puberty, especially as a way to mark the changes from childhood to adulthood. A particularly fascinating part of this ritual is the masculine rites of initiation, which celebrate the change of a boy into a man. In fact, many anthropologists agree that they are vital in creating social cohesion and identity for developing men. Rites of passage are critical for male development as new members of society for a number of reasons. Most notably, these reasons are understanding their role in this world, a sense of belonging, independence, and gaining respect. Oftentimes, there can be an overwhelming burst of nostalgia and anxiety about jumping to the next phase of life. This is even more important in older cultures that are rooted in lifestyles of the past. Think about what it would be like to be a young boy in the past. You spend your whole life tucked away, helping out with chores for your family or community, playing, or if you were lucky enough, studying. Then one day, you are suddenly pushed into the responsibility of being a man, leading your people, defending against possible threats, and being the main source of food and decisions for your community. Rituals can help make this transition smoother. It brings us meaning by partaking in a traditional community event, allowing you to relate to those around you that have been or will be part of that rite of passage. Even an old rite of passage is a source of inspiration when remembering ancestors or historical figures that have participated in that same tradition as you. But the rite of passage wasn't just important to males. Females also traditionally had a rite of passage that, although different, was equally important. In fact, a female's rite of passage is particularly special because they usually have more than one. They have this because women undergo more physical changes throughout their life than men. For example, rites of passage have been honoured when the girl goes through puberty and begins menstruation, as well as when she later becomes pregnant. Although the life expectancy was much lower for our ancestors, and women seldom made it past 45 years old, some women would have reached the menopause, and this was seen as initiation to a matriarch, therefore completing their final rite of passage. Female rites of passage are so important because it not only teaches women how to nurture the next generation, but also how to support their family, build a strong sisterhood with other women, and become strong and experienced members of the community. Rite of passage for men usually consists of three elements, separation, transition, and reincorporation. In separation, the boy is stripped of the comfort of his childhood experience. Some ethnic groups even send their boys into the wilderness for a period of time. Others change the boy's appearance, from shaved heads to tattoos, or even genital mutilation. All senses of individual possession, appearance, and expression 
are stripped to create a new identity and feeling of disconnect from the past stages of their life. In transition, rites of passage have some sort of task that must be completed before the participant is considered mature. Boys are usually taught some sort of information necessary to be a successful man in their community and they must prove their skill and knowledge in a test. The physical and mental stress felt here makes the rite of passage more valuable because it takes personal endurance and maturity to succeed. Plus, shared experience of the same pain makes it easier for men to relate to one another in the future, creating a sense of brotherhood. In reincorporation, the new man has completed whatever feats necessary to be a mature adult, and he is brought back to his community as such. The man is also introduced to his fellow men as an equal, in the same way that members of the military join the fleet or make the ranks. This gives the newly announced man a sense of brotherhood amongst the community and fuels that same sex friendship that is so prominent in human communities. Some of these elements are also prominent in women's rite of passage. In the Nutska tribe, after a party to honor her monarchy, the young woman was taken far out to sea and left to swim back to the land. Once she had done this, she was recognized by her community as a woman, strong, brave, and ready for the responsibilities of womanhood, marriage, and rearing children. The older experienced women accept the new young women to their sisterhood. Just like the men, they share stories of their own experiences, but not about surviving in the wild or suffering brutal pain, but of menstruation and make wishes and blessings for the new women's future life. The young women will then learn from these more experienced women throughout her life until she gets to her second rite of passage of pregnancy. If the woman is lucky enough, she will have survived all her childbirths and make it to the age of the menopause, where she is now a strong and experienced matriarch in the community, where she can then pass down her knowledge in the rite of passage to the younger generations of both boys and girls. It seems to be that boys usually have to complete tests that cause them to experience both psychological and physical pain and display bravery and independence in order to make them into men and warriors. Whereas girls are usually celebrated with a heavy emphasis on social and emotional understanding within the community, self-valuation, sex, relationships and mental health are taught through her role models and more experienced women in her community. The rite of passage can near enough be anything as long as it's a symbolic event that makes a significant change to someone's life. There are certain rites of passage that are only for men, while others only for women. Some, however, can overlap and can be performed by both men and women. So now we know why the rite of passage is so important for both men and women, as well as why cultures all over the world have practiced these rituals for thousands of years. We are left with one question. Are humans the only animals to do this? The answer is no. Although it obviously isn't celebrated or held to such significance among other animals. Male lion cubs, for example, are expelled from the pride at about three years of age and become nomads until they are old enough to try and take over other prides. The young male lions will use what they learned from their mothers to hunt and survive and sometimes young males from other prides that have been outlawed will band together. This has lots of similarities to some human rites of passage. The male is forced to face the hardships of life and in the process creates strong same-sex bonds with others that are currently going through the same thing. Related brothers will form coalitions and live the rest of their lives together, while singleton males will form coalitions with other singletons. One of these cases was with the Mapogo Lion Coalition, a band of five related South African male lion brothers, Rasta, Scar, Pretty Boy, Kinky Tail, and Mr. T, who controlled the Sabi Desert region in Kruger National Park. The five brothers stayed together despite a brief split in between, from birth till death. For the females, however, it's a different story. Some female lions remain with their pride while others must find new prides or become solitary lionesses. Lionesses in the wild typically live for around 12 to 15 years, 
As they age, they become less able to hunt and give birth. However, they will still play an important role in the pride's social dynamics, and may even help to raise the cubs of other lionesses. The other, younger lionesses, will save part of the food especially for them. This can be related to the matriarch rite of passage in humans. In other large cats, it's different. Other feline species aren't as social as lions or cheetahs, so the road to adulthood is more dependent on their ability to feed themselves. For example, jaguars will allow their cubs to hunt when they get to a certain age, letting them make mistakes without it being detrimental to the cub's survival. Once the cub is grown and experienced enough, the mother will leave it to fend for itself and search for a new mate. The rite of passage here can be recognised when the cub makes their first kill without help from the mother. In African elephants, the males will leave the herd between 12 and 15 years old and live in a group of males led by an old, experienced bull who demonstrates key survival and social behaviours to help these young males gain independence. The females remain with their natal herd for their whole lives. The oldest, most dominant female is called the matriarch. The matriarch is the backbone of the elephant family unit because she provides stability and determines ranging patterns for the rest of the family. The other females comprising the family unit are usually the matriarch's daughter and their offspring. The hierarchical ranking for these females is based on leadership, experience and age. Generally, the older the female, the higher her ranking. The primary function of elephant family units is the protection and rearing of calves. Adult females cooperate in the assistance of calf movements, foraging, protection and social experience. Calf survivability greatly increases with an increased number of females taking care of them. Female elephants celebrate births and older females help and teach the younger females how to properly nurture calves. Elephants that are 50 or more years old stop having children and begin the transition to becoming the matriarch of the herd, passing their knowledge on to the next generation. One of the matriarch's daughters will become the new matriarch after her death, and her granddaughters the more experienced females, and her great-granddaughters the young females. Female elephants have multiple rites of passage, just like us. Their extraordinary lifespan and lack of predation allows them to reach older age and pass their experience down to the next generation, just like us. Now we know why the rite of passage is so important to not only us, but to many social animals around the globe. It's clear that this coming of age ritual is a natural part of nature, and hopefully now you understand it a little better. Let's look at some of the rites of passage practiced both in ancient and modern cultures. In the Maasai tribe of Kenya, lion hunting was seen as a sign of bravery and personal achievement for the boys. As a male child in the Maasai tribe, you will be spat on at birth and told that you are no good. At 14 years old, a male child will be regarded as a moron. A moron is expected to prove his worth to the community and those who said at birth that he is no good by hunting a lion. When the lion population was high, the community encouraged solo lion hunts by the boys. However, because of the decline of the lion population, the community adopted a new rule that encouraged warriors to hunt in groups instead of the solo lion hunt. This new adapted rule allowed the lion population to grow over time. The young boys participated in the lion hunt with one spear and one shield. The Marseille believe that the female lions are the bearers of life in every species, hence it was prohibited to hunt a female lion, except the lionesses that pose a threat to human life or livestock. The lion hunt begins at dawn while the tribe sleeps. The warriors meet near a local landmark before departing to a predetermined hunting area. The older, experienced warriors filter out the group until only the bravest and strongest warriors remain. The warrior who struck the first blow is courted by the women. 
The community honours the hunter with much respect throughout the remainder of his lifetime. The Marseille tribe do not support lion hunting rites anymore. One of the most interesting rites of passage for young men was called the Halut killing in ancient Greece. At the age of seven, the male child was enrolled in the agoge under the authority of the boy herder, an elder statesman charged with supervising education. This began the first of the three stages of the agoge. If a young child was a standout student at the agoge, he was allowed to train with the Cryptia, a state security force organised by the rulers of Sparta. Following his 18th birthday, he would be sent off into the country with nothing but a knife and given the task of killing as many state-owned slaves, called Halutz, as possible. If you were asked to join the Cryptia at age 20, the boy would join the Spartan army and enter one of the public messes. If voted into a public mess, service continued until the age of 30, where the right to marry and vote were granted, becoming a full member of Spartan society. The rite of passage follows the three-stage process. The first stage is the removal from society, happening to a Spartan boy at age 7, leaving to train at the Agorge. This stage includes 23 years of training and combat experience, turning Spartan boys into men. The next stage, transition, occurs when the young man goes on his quest to kill the Halutes and return to his cryptia. Following his return, he transitions into the final stage, reincorporation into society. He is now considered a man and a warrior and is reincorporated into society with the reputation of a true Spartan man. The Satera Maui people of the Amazon perform an initiation ritual, forcing young men to place their hands into mittens filled with hundreds of bullet ants. The bite is approximately 20 times more painful than being stung by a wasp. The tribal men gather the ants and submerge them into a solution that temporarily renders them unconscious. The ants are then woven into the mittens. Upon waking, the men place their hands into the gloves, where they must remain for up to 10 minutes. The ant's sting prevents the body from protecting itself from pain. The body begins to convulse and the pain can last up to 24 hours. The most unusual aspect of the entire process is the fact that many men choose to repeat this ritual multiple times to prove their manhood. Female Mantuayans of Sumatra experience an agonizing practice known as teeth chiseling. The local shaman sharpens a crude blade as best as he can to make the chiseling as least painful as possible. The young girl is giving nothing to numb the feeling in her mouth before he takes a rock and begins to hack away, leaving behind pointed ends similar to shark teeth. To finish the process, her teeth are filed to achieve the desired shape. The rite of passage is a ritual embedded in nature. It has been in our species since records began. Some people argue that we miss this in modern society. Do you agree? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and wish to see more, then don't forget to subscribe. I'd love to see you stick around for future videos. Have a good one.